Hi there, Glenn Mitchell here. In the last episode, we talked about the dark and blending mode. So it seems natural in this episode to talk about the light and blending mode. The light and blending mode is the exact opposite of the dark and blending mode. Photoshop compares the active layer with what's underneath. It does that pixel by pixel, and for each pixel, channel by channel, sees which one is lighter, and that's the information that we see as a result of the blend. Let's make our quick detour to the math, and then we'll come back and I'll demonstrate the light and blending mode in action. The light and blending mode, the inverse of the dark and blending mode. Again, there's not much math to this. Active is the value of the active layer. Underlying is the value of what's visible underneath the active layer. The blended result will use the active value if that's brighter than the underlying value. Otherwise, it will use the underlying value. As with the dark and blending mode, you can get some mixed pixels. Photoshop's going to do the comparison pixel by pixel, and for each pixel, it's going to separately compare the channels. So we have the same example. The active layer, the value is mid-tone gray, 128, 128, 128. The underlying has a value of 132, 124, 132 for its RGB triplet. The blended result's going to be 132 for the red channel. The blended value is going to be 132, 128, 132. Our blended result's going to pick and choose among the RGB triplet values for the active layer and for the underlying pixel. Result's going to be 132, 128, 132. It's going to take 132 for the red channel from the underlying pixel. It's going to take 128 from the active layer because that's brighter for the green channel. And it's going to take 132 for the blue channel because there the underlying layer has the brighter value. Let's go back and let's take a look at the light and blending mode in action. We'll go up here, we'll change the blending mode from normal to lighten. We'll leave the opacity at 50%, and we can see that it's had a substantial effect on the image. Where the information is lighter in the active layer, that's what we will see. Where it's lighter in the underlying layers, that's the information that will result from the blend. Now we can pull the opacity up from 50% to 100%, and it'll be much more obvious what's going on with our blend. These white pixels here are the lightest information, and so that's what's used. These dark pixels in the middle, are much darker than the information underneath. And so instead, the information that's underneath is lighter, and that's what we see as a result of the blend. Just like the darkened blending mode, the lightened blending mode is symmetrical. I can demonstrate that quickly. Go ahead and make a new layer here. Turn on our layer blend. For this layer underneath, I'm gonna change the mode from normal to lighten. I'm gonna set the opacity to 50%, and now it won't matter which layer is on top and which layer is underneath. We will get the same result because the layer blend is symmetrical. The lighten layer blend is used when we want to selectively lighten features in a photograph. It's quite common to see two layers paired together, one with a lighten blend and one with a darken blend, so we can selectively lighten some features and darken others, a dodge and burn effect. I also mentioned in the previous video that the TLR sharpening tools tend to use a pair of layers, one with a darken blending mode and the other with a lighten blending mode. And that's because the sharpening artifacts tend to be more obvious for the lighter pixels along the edges in our photograph. And so it's quite common to want to use different settings for the lighter pixels than the darker pixel. And having these two layer blends allows us then to selectively apply different sharpening settings to the lighter pixels and the darker pixels in our sharpening halos. I'm going to introduce the multiply layer blend and the screen layer blend in the next two episodes. The multiply and screen layer blends can be very helpful when we have photographs that are either overexposed or underexposed. I'm Glenn Mitchell from thelightsright.com. Cheers.